Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn another truth. But I don't feel right. Because you probably forgot. Huh? But I skip. Did I skip something? No. Sabbath peace. Yeah. No, we don't even pray in no more. Huh? We ain't prayed in a long time. Now you good? <laughs> Why well, I feel like I'm forgetting something? Uh, Sabbath peace. I don't know. What's the first thing I say after seven feet? Another opportunity. Yeah, and I to work. It is another opportunity? Why do I feel like I say something before that? Goodness gracious, something must be going wrong. <laughs> All right, well, Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn that the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it. Don't be that way. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. You know what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> Let's go to uh y'all say that day. I was I was doing training at work today. I was like uh I was like everybody pull it up on their computer. I was like everybody get to just say amen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nobody got it. I was like, oh yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> tough, tough crowd, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They probably didn't appreciate that thing. <laughs> let's uh let's open up to uh what we want to open up to. Let's just get right back into it. So we left off Joshua chapter 9. Let's go ahead and just jump right back into it. It's Joshua chapter 10. We're gonna try to make it quick today. So most of most of what we're gonna go over today, I kind of read ahead and was doing a little little looking at it just to kind of prepare for it. Um and most of what we're going over today is is marking out territory. Um, in the book of Joshua. So we're not going to read through it, but what I am going to do is we're going to pull up some maps. So today it'll be a short study because I don't want to jump in. Well, it may be a short study because I don't want to jump into Judges um, today because that's a whole other, you know what I'm saying, shebang once you start getting into there. So, <laughs> yeah, so we'll we'll probably start Judges next week. I was just reading um, over that too, uh, like uh, last week. Judges? It's been a while since I actually, I, I, mean, I haven't took a look at Judges in a while, so I look forward to it. I, I haven't read it in a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in Joshua. We're going to start at Joshua chapter 10. We're going to do verse 1. And just as a reminder, remember we came from uh, we came from Ai. All right? We came from Ai and we just took care, of the, took care of the king and Ai, took care of the people there. We originally were chased out of Ai. And then we came back, you know what I'm saying, to fight with the people and the Most High God gave it into our hands after we took care of uh, Achan. So once we came into Ai, you know what I'm saying, we took over that city, got rid of the king, and uh, and, uh, and spoiled the land. The Most High God let us keep the spoils of the land. Um, and then if you remember, we talked about how the king represented Yahushua, right? Because the king himself, he was ambushed as Yahushua was ambushed. And then after that, he hung on a tree. Um, and he hung until eventide, the book says. Just like Yahushua hung until the, until the skies got dark, right? And then they, then they took his butt down before it dark. So we see a whole book testifies of Yahushua. And through, and through us conquering that land, we took the spoils. And the same thing, when we, uh, when we put Yahushua to death, we actually spoiled him as well and took the benefits of his death. You know what I'm saying? We take it on for our own life, those of us that believe and walk in this, walk in this world. So now we want to continue on and just kind of see what does Joshua take us to next this is Joshua chapter 10 verse 1 let's hear what we got now it came to pass when Adonai Zedek king of Jerusalem had heard how Joshua had taken Ai uh -huh. so now the people heard about it they heard it they heard how Joshua took Ai and they like oh this is not good All right it's not pretty All right y'all remember last week we had we had a group of people what was their name who remembers their name Y'all remember the Gibeonites? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? The Gibeons, they the Gibeon, they came on, and what did they pretend like? Yeah, they pretended like they was from a faraway country. They pretended like we ain't from around here, because our law told us 
if they was from around here, you kill them. Don't make no peace with them. Mm. Right? So they pretended they, they put on some raggedy clothes. They got some old molded bread. And they walked up like, ooh, whoo, this is a long journey. We didn't want to make peace with y'all. Because our law say if they come from far away, we can make peace with them. Right? So Gibeon already heard the, heard the news. Gibeon came up with us, tricked us, made an, made an agreement with us, and made peace with us. And then we later found out they from our neighborhood. Right? Now you had other crews that's hearing the same thing. As a matter of fact, we're about to read how they got mad at Gibeon about this. Watch this. It came to pass when Adonai said it, king of Jerusalem had heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it as he had done to Jericho and her king. So he had done to Ai and her king and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them. Right? So they had mad about it like that. They had our brother, Gibeon? They made peace with them? And Gibeon, you you know, you might make the assumption, you're like, Gibeon, man, you know what I'm saying? They, they probably saw. That's, yeah, they saw. Ain't nobody, you know what I'm saying? That's why Gibeon did, because they knew they couldn't win. What did they say about Gibeon? They, they that oh, among them, that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city. Gibeon was a what? A great city. With how, what type of warrior? As one of the royal cities. Uh-huh. And because it was greater than Ai, and all the men thereof were mighty. He said, all the men of thereof were what? Mighty. That was a bad boy. What you talking about? Give me what? No pushover. They wasn't no punks. Give me was out there trying to get it. What y'all talking about? People looked up to Gibeon. But Gibeon heard about what the Most High God did. Gibeon said, you know what? Go ahead and give me a... Where, who got some raggedy clothes real quick? You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and give me some molded bread. You got some bread you left out? Go ahead and give me that bread. We about to figure this out. We ain't fighting these people. Right? They some mi mighty men, they said. He said, but we're not going for that. Right? Let's see what it does. Let's see. Keep going. That's why Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Haom, king of Hebron, and unto Piram, king of Jeremiah, and unto Japhia, king of Lachish, and unto Deber, king of Eglon, saying, Come up unto me and help me, that we may smite Gibeon. For it has made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Right? So they now they're creating a, 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 a conglomerate of all these different nations. And they like, listen, let's come together. And now let's get at the Gibeonites. Because the Gibeonites made an agreement with our enemies. These people that are coming through and they're killing all our brothers. The Gibeonites joined them. So they're like, let's get Gibeon. Yes, so remember, when Gibeon came and they made that agreement with us, in order to have peace with us, you got to be a servant of ours. So technically, these people just are servants. But us as Israelites, we got a different way of looking at things. If you are possession, we're going to protect it. So watch this. Therefore, the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem and the king of Hebron, the king of Jeremoth and the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon and made war against it. Mm -hmm. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua and to the camp of Gil to Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of battle. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Mm -hmm. And Joshua therefore came up, came up unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. Mm -hmm. The Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them among the way that goes up to Beth Heron and smote them to Azka and unto Mekeda. And it came to pass that as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them. He cast down what? Great stones from heaven upon them uh -huh. unto Azka. And they died. They were so notice what happened. You had a, a league of nations, right? A group of nations that came down to attack our territory. Right? We made an agreement with Gibeon. We own Gibeon at this point. They are servants. So you came down to attack our ter territory. A group of nations. What does that sound like? Well, a group of nations. Well, when, uh, Abraham did that thing to them. Abraham. What are, what's, what's supposed to happen at the end? Revelation. In Revelation. All the nation going to come together to fight against God. You think these people going to have it in their mind? Oh, we're about to go down and fight against God. No. 
They going to go fight against somebody who they see as a traitor. See some people? Are these African Americans just going to up and leave? These African Americans, after all this time, we didn't took care of them in our country, they just going to up and leave? They didn't lost their darn mind. Then they go come out and they go, so you mean to tell me these Brazilian think they just going to, what? Y'all done lost y'all? What's wrong with y'all? Right? From all over the darn world, we just going to be coming. We all going to congregate one place in Israel. And it's going to be a league of nations they going to come and come and fight against God. And guess what the most high God going to do? If they blow the plague so fast, they darn head going to spin. Give me Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah 20 I want. Matter of fact, give me Zechariah. Give me Zechariah chapter 14. It's Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. What's that? It's what? What kind? Mm. Yeah, yeah, and the Lord said. You know, the Lord told you. Uh, I don't like so, uh, You know what I'm saying? Well, y'all know what he said. I'm about to do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> This is uh this is uh Zechariah chapter 14. Give me verse 1. What the book say? It book's amazing. It book's amazing. You line that thing up. All, all it takes the most I got to give you the what get it what it takes to, to line that thing up. And the only way to do that is the most I got to give it to you. Can't nobody boast. How you gonna boast outside of the most high God? How you gonna boast? I'm so smart, I figured it out. Book already told you no good thing come but from who? The Lord. Wrong with you. How you gonna figure something out? He didn't want you to. That's crazy. Book tell you if you're going to boast, boast in what? That he knows me. You're going to boast, boast in the knowledge of the Most High God. That's crazy. You spend time boasting about anything. Ooh, look how nice my car is. What's that again? Is that Isaiah 8? No. Not Isaiah 8. It's Jeremiah. Uh, it's Jeremiah. You both. Uh, that he knows, boast in this. That he knows. Jeremiah, I can't think of where it said, though. But. It I want to say Jeremiah. Yeah, I did too. I have to look that thing up. But uh, this is uh, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. And behold, the day of the Lord comes, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Uh huh. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. He going to gather how many nations? All nations. Okay. And the city shall be taken, and the horses rifled, and okay. the women ravished. Okay. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Okay. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Who gonna fight against him? The Lord. And he yeah, he gonna do it as when he did what? Fought in the day of battle. I don't know what day of battle he could be talking about. Keep going. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. Uh-huh. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Okay. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. Okay. For the valley of the mountains shall reach to Azal. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Okay. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. All the saints with him. Watch what happens next. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. He said the light shall not be what? Nor dark. The light shall not be clear, nor shall the light be dark. Okay. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem. Half of them toward the former. Watch sea, this. And half go of them back. The hinder sea. So I should go back to Joshua. Where we leave off? What verse? Like verse 10? 11. This, this is uh, Joshua chapter 10, verse uh, 11. Watch what he said. He said it's a day. It was neither day nor night. Why? Because the sun kept shining? Right? It said, he said it'd be neither day nor night because the sun just kept shining. Watch this. 
And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel, and were in the uh, and were in the going down to Beth Horon, uh -huh. that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah. Uh huh. And they died. Uh huh. They were more which died with hailstones than more they, died from what? Hailstones. Than who? Than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Keep going. Then spake Joshua unto the Lord. What did Joshua say? The day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. Who delivered them? The Lord delivered up the Amorites. And he did what? Before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Agilom. He said, Son, stand thy still. Keep going. And the moon too. What else? And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Uh-huh. It is not... Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So Keep the, going. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. Who fought for Israel? The Lord. Isn't that what Zechariah said? He said, it's going to be the time where most high God is going to come and fight for you just like the day of battle. What do you think he's talking about? He's saying, just like back then. Then that's why at the end, and Zechariah said, it's going to be a day where it's neither day nor night. Because that sun just going to keep shining. Just like here with Joshua. Joshua raised up his hand. He said, you know what? Son, go ahead and stay still so we can uh, keep fighting these people. And this, he said, and, and he said, it ain't never been a day where the Most High God just hearkened on to a man. And the battle that they are actually fighting is for Jerusalem here in Joshua. That's just right. Like Y'all sure gonna fight for Jerusalem when he come back. And after it's all said and done, the sun ain't gonna never stop shining. Mm -hmm. Right? We look at these things. It's important for us to know the history because these are the things that gonna play out. He's trying to let us know on a small scale, this already happened. I'm gonna do it real big next time. Like, but this is the format that it's gonna lay out in. When Y'all sure come back, don't you know we're gonna pull up the maps in a second. Don't you know when Yahushua come back, he's taking the, like almost the same route that Moses and Joshua took? Mm. The book gonna tell us, tell the book tell us straight up. He came and he going through Basra. That's Edom. That's exactly the route that we came. We came out of a place called Midian. Then you got Edom, Edom right there as we started our journey. Then after we went to Edom, we started to go through all these other nations. How you think Yahushua coming? He gonna start to Edom, the book said. What is that, Isaiah 63? 53, we ain't got to get it, right? Ain't 53. Wait, no, 63. Yeah. I think it's 63. It might be 63. 53 is uh, uh who, 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 who yeah. believes our report? report who has believed our report? Um, grab a, uh, grab a, uh, let's go back to, uh, where, we, where we at right now? Joshua 10, 11. Okay, now we can keep going. No, we on 10, probably 14 now, 15. We on uh, 15. All right, it's Joshua chapter 10. We're going to start off about verse 15. We're going to keep going here. And Joshua turned and all Israel with him unto the camp of Gilgal. Even the hailstones, right? You think about them hailstones, we ain't got to get it. But where do we read about hailstones falling down? In uh, Genesis. And, oh, that was like uh, with the fire. What, what about Revelation? Revelation. Yeah. In Genesis 2, oh, in Genesis 2 though. Uh, not Gen Exodus. Yeah. In Exodus 2, though, right? You got you got, uh, you got the fire, the, the hail mixed with fire. Mm -hmm. Right? That too. And those plagues, you see those plagues double up in Revelation. Right, in Revelation, you have hailstones falling. Right? The most high God is going to fight for us. We ain't going to have to lift a finger. Right? Yahushua would tell us in, uh, in, I think, again, in Isaiah 63, he said, you know what I'm saying? I fought these people by myself. I ain't had no help. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else still, everybody else clothed and still white. Mine just dipped, dripped in blood. Right? Because the most high God is going to fight for us. That's why, you know what I'm saying, you can't pay. They got this thing, and I'm interested in it, don't get me wrong. They got these people, uh, I was reading about it, a brother uh, sent me a text message uh, the other night. Uh, he one of the brothers that watch, who, who watched the study from, uh, I believe, from Texas. And uh, he actually sent me a text last night when I was out there trying to get that game. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, you heard about, uh, you heard about Ghana, you know what I'm saying, offering people to come back to Africa. You know what I'm saying? He is like, and so I, I was like, I was like, no, nah, I haven't heard nothing like that. I was like, uh, let me let me hear about it. But it's like, they it's like a 400 year type type celebration. Like, okay, it's been 400 years, come on back. So I'm like, that sounds very interesting to me. I was like, I'd like to hear about it. Let me see. You know what I'm saying? Let me check it. You know, I'm skeptical. I don't, you know, I don't, you know, I don't be trusting nothing. So I listened to this lady. It was a lady out there talking about it, 
and she is a fair-minded lady. You know what I'm saying? She is like, you know what I'm saying? She is fair, seem honest, seem to consider things. I don't know what she's talking about. I ain't never looked into the information myself. But the way she was presenting the information, it seemed like she was being fair about it. So I still gotta look into it, but she basically saying, hey, there's two different, you know, offers that's out there. There's one offer that's like, hey, invest in Africa, do this, maybe move back to Africa. But it's coming from a source who she doesn't believe to be reputable. She's like, you know, you know, that government is tied in to, uh, you know, the Chinese money and Russian money and all these different, you know, all these different big countries have an interest in there. So it's like, you know, how much does it take to just lean on you and make you do what they want you to do? Do we really want to accept that type of offer? But she is like, but there's a different offer from Ghana where they saying, come on back. We giving you land. You know what I'm saying? Like you come on back and you get land and this, that and other. And she is making some points. Part of her point was she is like, you can't look at this as the return or the prophecy. Because what about the poor person who can't afford to go to Ghana? You know what I'm saying? Or who can't afford to go back to Africa? Are you trying to say that the most high God is only trying to get together the people that have the money to return? And I just thought that was an excellent point. Sometimes we lose sight of what the word is saying. We get so excited and people get uh, easily tickle our fancy. But we lose sight. Is this what the most high God is describing? He never described that. When we go, book tell you Gentiles going to be paying for it. That makes sense. If a Gentile pay for it, guess who can go? Everybody. Yeah, I mean, uh, when we came back to the land after leaving Persia, they paid for it. When we came back to the land after leaving Persia. Egypt when we came for the land after leaving Egypt. Every time we come back to the land, it's never on our dollar. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all better fork it up. What's wrong with you? We a needy people. That's why I don't listen to these people. Even at that black man, I appreciate the brush. I, I appreciate all the brothers. I, I really do because they, they got a passion for this. I appreciate them. But at the end of the day, we not coming to no solution just based off of uh, do for self and black dollar. You lost your darn mind. That thing ain't make sense to me. You owe me. What you mean you better give me my darn money? What's wrong with y'all? They got us scared to ask us for what we owe? I'm going to ask every time. And I'm going to do for self. Whole time I'm doing for self. I want my money though. Oh no, I'm going to open up the business and we're going to circulate back up. After we get done with that, we marching on Washington and I want my dollar. I want you to double me up with interest. I'm 40 acres in the mule. You know what I'm saying? I need, I need at least 20 of them 40. I'll let you give me the rest later. I know y'all, you know, skimping your land. Don't give me no land in darn, you know what I'm saying? Death Valley either. You know what they, you know they, you know they going to try to do. You already know what they going to darn try to do. You know, hit a, you know you, you going to drive into California. You got that big old silver thing where they, it's like a, a solar farm where they trying to harness the sun, you know what I'm saying, and shine it down. They going to give us a little spot next to that or something. Something that's way too high. You know ain't nobody trying to live way out here. Baby, give me some prime real estate, man. I deserve it. What's wrong with y'all? I take some. I take some down in Arkansas or something. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Give me some of them. You know what I'm saying? Just cut down the trees before I get there. Don't give me. I'm just saying. Don't give me nothing. That you know what I'm saying? Then you gonna have to give it up or get me out of here. Either way, book say it's not on my dollar. Book say these people. You got the what's it? G O C C. You know what I'm saying? You got the G O C C Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? They going out teaching their people borrow. Borrow from your family members and then go to Egypt. Two things wrong with that. Let me tell you. One thing, why in the world is you going to Egypt? Right. <laughs> What's in Egypt? What in the world is in Egypt that's going to say, you, oh, you taped all your problems. Look where you went. To Egypt. But they just as racist out there. What's wrong with y'all? Egypt ain't even Egypt. You got a bunch of, quiet as it kept, you got a bunch of Greeks. That we call Arabs now, you know what I'm saying, in Egypt. We call them Arabs. All these people we Arab, most likely these people really Greeks, right? They just migrated. When Alexander the Great took over all this stuff, they migrated and they took over all the places that he took over. Right? We gotta look at Greeks now and it's like playing white people. No. No. You know what I'm saying? That don't line up. Right? That don't line up. You look at these people, man, they the other part that's wrong with it. Not only are you going to Egypt, you're borrowing and you're not giving back to your family. That's not borrowing. You still. You just told a lie. You have no intentions on paying them back. No, that's not. Now you just robbed your brother to go do something and you talking about the Lord did it. 
That don't make sense. It's never gonna be off of our dollar. When it come down, the Gentiles gonna willing. You can see, you can see the signs of it. You know what I'm saying? You got all these Black Lives Matter people and all these people marching. And what you got? A bunch of Gentiles right before, them, right behind them. You got Gentiles. It's a guy named George Soros. All these people mad at him. He fund all these, all these protests, all these Democratic protests that go against the Republicans, all the Black Lives Matter stuff. He fund all of it. A big, rich. Uh, he ain't, he ain't Russian. But he like a rich, uh, like German dude or something. He ain't German either, but he's something like that. You know what I'm saying? He over there. He one of them rich people. He is, uh, you know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of the jokes say that he is like kind of with the Nazis a little bit. So they be trying to figure out how this dude, you know what I'm saying, get by without nobody being mad at him. You know what I'm saying? But he an old dude, rich dude, and you know what I'm saying? He be funding all this stuff. That's what it's going to look like. Right? That's what it's going to look like. It's going to be somebody or some people funding everything that we do. So when you think, how do you think my position ever going to be do for self only? As long as they're not giving it to us, figure it out. Do for self. We ain't going to sit here and wait for somebody and just so we just die off. That's crazy. Right? But the whole time we do for self, our whole message got to be y'all owe us. And every single day, I want darn interest. I can charge a Gentile. That's book. That's book. I can charge a Gentile. Books say don't charge your brother interest. It say, but the stranger. Mm, I ain't got nothing, ain't nothing in my bed. Most of God say, ain't nothing in my bed. It's a stranger coming in. It's a stranger. He ain't one of our people. What you talking about? You all right? I, I, I want interest on it. What's wrong with y'all? You said 40 acres and a mule? I need, I need at least a Toyota. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just give me a little, you know what I'm saying? I don't need no Lexus. That's crazy. I don't need no darn Lexus. Just give me, you know what I'm saying? Just give me a little Corolla. You know what I'm saying? I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? I'll take it. Just give me a little Corolla. You know what I'm saying? Hit me off with at least, at least 20 acres or I'll take the rest later. You know what I'm saying? We good. You know what I'm saying? Give me some good fertile ground. Don't, don't try to put me out in the desert. We all right. You know what I'm saying? I handle it. I'll figure it out. I ain't like bugs. You know what I'm saying? We'll figure it out. Just give it to me. I'll learn what to do with it. Hire me a couple Mexicans and become a hypocrite. No, let the Mexicans stay. What's wrong with y'all? You know what I'm saying? Become a, why are we building the wall? You know what I'm saying? Let the, let the Mexicans stay. You know what I'm saying? Act like these rich white folks. That's what I'm saying. That's what you know, you know what get me? These people try to play with us and try to make us believe Democrats are for the poor, Republicans are for the for the rich. Let's stop all that lying. I ain't believing that stuff no more. These Democrats, rich and everybody. Name, name. Who's a Republican? Name one. <laughs> all the rich people you know are they Republicans? You got all of Hollywood up against Trump. They ain't rich. You mean tell me all of them is just like, you know what? All my riches aside, I just want to do the right thing. Since when? <laughs> Please. These Democrats getting money out here. Getting money out here. Matter of fact, if you look at it, the people voting for Trump are the poor people. These poor white folks in the middle of the country working at factories and stuff. They look at that, man, this stuff is foolishness. You know who wants the Mexicans to stick around? These rich people. They can sit here and be like, listen, man, I just need my, my lawn mold. I need somebody to clean my house. I need somebody to cook for me at night. I tell you what, I'll hit you off. And I don't want to pay, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to save a buck. I don't want to pay no big bucks for that. You know what I'm saying? We can't afford that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I got to sit here and haggle with these messes and come, come, you know what I'm saying? Do my yard all the time. Like, yeah, yeah, 60 bucks. 60 bucks. I don't, don't need to do 60 bucks. You, know, you can do 40. You know what I'm saying? I got to haggle with it all the time. People ain't trying. You can't nobody afford that stuff unless you got money. Right? We can't let these people keep confusing us. Just telling us everything they want to say. You know what I'm saying? Having us hate the stuff that they want to hate. There's a lot of reason that, you know what I'm saying, a person would dislike Trump. I get it. A lot of reason that they say, those ain't the reason. It ain't because the, it ain't because the man building the wall. I appreciate it. And it ain't because he made America more racist like it wasn't racist before him. He right. definitely ain't made it. I mean, Mar to this day, to this day, you ask anybody, be like, okay, give me a quote from Trump that's racist against black people. They ain't going to be able to pull up nothing. You know what they're going to do, though? Let me tell you, back in the 70s, he owned an apartment building, and he had a claim filed on him that he was racist against white, I mean, black people. Back in the 70s, back in the 70s, every apartment building had a claim that they had racist against black people. They, they were all racist against black people. You telling me Trump was down there managing it? He handling the day to day? Hi, uh, you know, I'm serving this eviction. Though. You ain't never, Trump ain't never put an eviction notice on nobody's darn door. Right? 
And that's not to say the man ain't racist. I don't, I don't, I don't doubt that the man is darn racist. I'd be crazy. If he wasn't racist, I'd be darn surprised, right? You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to say it. I'm not sitting here trying to defend this racism, right? I'm just saying the claim that we have against the man is based off of people playing with our emotions. Let's form our own opinion. Let's look at the man and say, you know what? I like the fact you're building the wall. I support it. Let me tell you what I don't like. I don't like your stance on police. I don't like the fact that you feel like the police can shoot my people down and you ain't got to say nothing about it. I don't like the fact that you support all these white folks. As soon as they come out, it's all good. And then when some black people get together, then you call them a mob and you call them all that. No, nah, I don't like that. I'm not feeling it. Right? These white folks get together and they clear KKK. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, I don't really know what's going on. They're good guys. I don't like that. Nah, I don't like that. Nah, I don't like that. that you know, we, we good on that. Right? But let's just be precise. I ain't with all this blanket, I hate everything he does just because of him. I'm not with that. That doesn't make sense. That's not wise. You know what I'm saying? It's just not wise. You know what I'm saying? We look at Hillary Clinton. We look at Obama. We look at all of them. Let's look at everybody the same and let's just say, I like this. I don't like that. I like, I like, I like the fact that Obama can stand up and he'd do a little bit of slick talking and bring awareness to you know what goes on in, in, the, in the Hebrew community, the black community. I appreciate that. That's a good. I did like that about him. He is a slick talk. You know what I'm saying? He, he communicated very eloquently. People like to hear him talk and make people feel good. And it was effective. I like that. I don't like the fact that you ain't do nothing for our people outside of words. I don't like the fact that under you, we had the lowest, uh, almost the lowest black business loans ever to small businesses. Ever under a black president, the lowest for black people ever. Just, I don't know, does not compute for me. I don't like it, right? Why we can't have an open discussion? We have to be able to get there. We have to be able to say, you know what? We want to have an intelligent discussion. We're not just going with the okie doke. Man, try to sign me up for register to vote. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, I'm already registered. He's like, you're a Democrat, right? Like, no, I ain't no darn Democrat. You don't get on my darn face. I was like, you shouldn't be one either. That's stupid. It don't make no darn sense. What are you going to be a Democrat for? Tell me what it means to be a Democrat. Who put us in slavery? Yeah. All right, now I want to say who put us in slavery. All the folks put us in slavery. Yeah. Who fought to keep us in slavery? Democrats. You know what they're going to tell you, though? It, I mean, it changed, though. The party changed. Oh, really? Oh, really? Who did it change with? Give me the president that it changed with. Who are they going to say? Lyndon B. Johnson? Lyndon B. Johnson? You know what I'm saying? You with Lyndon B. Johnson? You know what they're going to tell you? He came out with a new deal for black people. Whole time, they got recorded, not recorded, but they got it documented that the man was sitting there using the N-word. Nobody want to talk about it. Is that where it changed when the new deal came? And black people got, you know what I'm saying, a little bit of opportunity? Right? What about when Kennedy, you know what I'm saying? Maybe it changed when Kennedy was around. You know what I'm saying? The Kennedy, you know what I'm saying? Kennedy, you know what I'm saying? He, uh, he, uh, what Kennedy do for us? He, uh, he worked with Martin Luther King and took meetings with him. What they ain't gonna tell you is the man was like, now I don't want nothing to do with that stuff at first. Until you know what? It can help me win an election. Yeah, and then uh, he had that thing about uh, like churches or something like that. He was like, doing like funding churches or something. Oh, yeah, afterwards? Yeah. Oh, yeah, money be to, made like, now. To like speak certain messages, though. That's right. Yeah. Pay off the churches, you know what I'm saying? You do all, all this stuff is corrupt. So when we gonna talk about it? You think about it, what the kids say, finesse. The kid, they finessed us. They're like, okay, we can't have you as a slave no more. We lost that one. <clears throat> I know what we'll do. We'll give you a little bit, and then you'll love us forever. And that's literally, I think it's Lyndon B. Johnson that said that. He said, if we do this, black people, the, the, we'll have the black vote forever. This stuff is documented. It ain't like people just making this stuff. This is documented stuff. Nobody wants to talk about it. They're going to tell you, you know what? Vote Democrat. 2020, vote Democrat. You vote whatever you want to vote. You know what I'm saying? You got some Hebrews who say don't vote. Because our book tell us don't put no king over us. Right? But, you know what I'm saying? That thing don't really apply. We ain't in our, land. In our land. You know what I'm saying? We ain't in our land. Whether we put him there or not, he going to be there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Might well have a darn say of who he is. Bro, the Hebrews act like they live in Israel with the yeah, thing you know they try to do. But, you know what I'm saying? They ain't got, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's you know cool, what I'm saying? Who taught them? 
It's cool, but Who's some on? stuff is like you just not. We just not gonna physically be able to do. Yeah, it. people just stuff. people just gotta be taller. People ain't busy. You know what I'm saying? If we who gonna teach you, man? I like that sweatshirt, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to put my order in. You know what I mean? I'm about to put my order in too. The Bible study over. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I think not. You know what I'm saying? I need one of them things too. You know what I'm saying? I still got that green, that that jacket too. I gotta throw that thing on too. But go ahead and stand up, stand up here. You know what I'm saying? Let the people see what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Talking about it. Don't worry about it. We just circulating the black dollar right now. That's all we're doing. <laughs> we ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? We just circulating the black dollar. See that? Why? You know what I'm saying? You see that? You know what I'm saying? Now you know what I'm saying? Turn around. Let them see what you're doing. Yeah, you got something on the back? Yeah, let's got this on there. Just, uh, you know what I'm saying? You see him popping the collar? Ah, you know what I'm saying? Little, little something right little, there. Little, you know what I'm saying? You know. That's how we got to do it. You know what I'm saying? What's the website they go to? Uh, you can go to uh, uh, bookuniversity.bigcartel.com. That's how and we do it. There. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the brother. I appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do it. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the brother. You know what I'm saying? We, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we have something out there. We gotta, we gotta. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. We, it's a lot of stuff we deal with. Just you know what I'm saying? Just mentally, physically, emotionally, all the stuff that we deal with. It's like you know what I'm saying? There's, it was a woman talking at that at that march. A lot of suppressed stuff. Too. A lot of suppressed stuff. Suppressed all this stuff. Too. Yeah, it's a woman talking at that march. She was like, man, stop telling y'all y'all sons not to cry. You know what I'm saying? She right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? We can't tell these kids not to cry because that's, that's how our pops was. And they freak out. You know what I'm saying? They freak out and they, 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 they suppress all this stuff. But at the same time, we can't just get, send the message that it's okay to just be out here just crying all willy-nilly either. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Cause we gotta be, we have to be precise. We have to have honest conversations. There's a reason. Like, let's look back. There's a reason why people start telling their sons not to cry. That didn't just come up. Oh, like, mm, might be a good idea. There's a reason. There was a defense mechanism. It was something that they were protecting them from. They said that I knew that if you walk around here crying, these people will take advantage of your emotions. Yeah. That hasn't gone away. So we still have to protect that. We have to look at our sons and say, you know what? You can cry. Make sure it's worth it. You can cry. Just make sure that thing worth it. Right? Don't be sitting here just crying because something don't go your way. People will prey on that. You can't trust these people. The same women that was at that march talking about, you know, you let, your, let your boys cry. When that boy become a man, they ain't dealing with him. You don't do with a man that every time, every time something happens, he start crying. Better cry while you fix it, boy. I, I tell my boy, you know what I'm saying? You cry, but you hush that stuff up. But I build that trust with him. I see my boy crying and we in public, I take his butt to the side. I take him to the bathroom. Don't let nobody see you cry. You let me see you cry. Right. You cry with your mama. You can't trust all these people. Cry. Let it out. You let me. You let it out to me. I'm going to protect you. Your mama going to protect you. Just here and get your heart to all these people. They'll crush you out here. We got to deal with that. We got to deal with the feeling that no matter what we do is no hope. I go to school, learn everything I can. They still not going to let me in. So you know what the easy thing to do? Well, just forget it. I ain't even going to school. I got to go on this job. You know what I'm saying? I know I can dress up. I can take out my weave. I can do everything exactly how they want me to do it. Take off my nails. And I know they still going to underpay me. You know what? I'm going to walk on this interview, act the way I want to act. So now we lose opportunities because that's our mindset. And our mindset is not, it's not imaginative. It's not like we just came up with it. It's real. It may not apply to every situation, but it's real. It's a real thing. It's a real mindset of hopelessness. And what does that turn into? When you don't have hope, what do you, what's going to happen? You're going to be depressed. You're going to be hurt. You're going to be poor. You don't have nothing to look forward to. You're going, you're not going to want... I got, a, I got a homegirl, she lived right up the street. Right up the street. She called me and just told me, she was like, can you and Tasha take my kid? And she's like, I'm serious. Cause I'm not gonna be here no more. Mm. Broke my darn heart. Broke my darn heart. And so we look at it, it's like, it's no hope. That's what it is, she don't have no hope. She ain't got no family, nobody supporting her, nobody helping her out. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Messed up situation that she in. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all these different things our community has to battle. We got to fight against this stuff. And it all comes down to we don't know who we are. Yeah. T 
Teach the people who we are. You want us to stop killing people, killing ourselves, selling drugs to people, selling drugs to ourselves? Teach us who we are. That'll clean up right away. You teach us who we are, we'll clean it up. Stop hiding it from us. Stop pretending like it ain't there. Stop pretending like you don't hear us Hebrews talking. Right? Stop pretending like y'all ain't monitoring these, these YouTube videos. Like y'all ain't like y'all ain't blocking certain people from seeing these YouTube videos. Like y'all ain't y'all ain't controlling this stuff. I know they controlling it. I see these people talking about fooling this and all their numbers go up. You know what I'm saying? These people throttle and push and everything that they want to push. They don't want to push this. This stuff ain't about to be pushed. That's crazy. Facebook too. Twitter too. All these things. They control all this stuff. Just teach people the truth. You teach people the truth, we'll be all right. We'll be able to get somewhere. And if you ain't going to teach them, we're going to keep teaching. All right, where we at? Joshua 10, 14. It's Joshua 10, chapter 14. We should be on about 15, 16, or something. 16, 16. It's Joshua chapter 10, verse 16. But the five kings fled and hid themselves in a the cave at Mechida. Uh-huh. And it was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hid in a cave at Mechida. Uh-huh. And Joshua said, Roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave, and set men by it for to keep them. Mm-hmm. And stay you not, but pursue after your enemies, and smite the hindmost of them, and suffer them not to enter into their cities. For the Lord your God has delivered them into your hand. Uh huh. And it came to pass when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them with a very great slaughter. He said he slayed, they slayed them with a very great slaughter. What happened? Till they were consumed that the rest which remained of them entered into fenced cities. Okay. And all the people returned to the camp uh, to Joshua at Mechida in peace. Okay. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. You better shut your darn mouth. That's what happened. Them people got their butt beat out of that. They better shut your darn mouth. Nobody moved their tongue against us. What's wrong with y'all? These people have lost their darn mind. They don't know the glory of our people, the good most high God gave our people. They gonna see that thing firsthand though. They ain't gonna move their darn mouth against us. What's wrong with y'all? Keep going. Then said Joshua, open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. Okay, so then they stuffed them in the cave. They said, open up the mouth of the cave. Bring these kings out. Watch what they do with the king. And they did so, and brought forth those five kings unto them, unto him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jeremoth, and the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel, and said unto the captains of the men of war, which went with him, Come near, and put your feet upon the necks of these kings. Put your feet where? Upon the necks of these kings. Mm -hmm. Give me Psalm chapter 1, I mean, uh, Psalm chapter 110. It's Psalm 110. He said, put your feet where? Put it on the necks of these kings. Everything we looking at here, everything in this book is symbolic to the Messiah. We just think we reading about Joshua and some, and some Israelites taking over some stuff. We got to teach this book. We got to teach this book. You can't throw a rock without seeing somebody teach this book wrong. We got to teach the book. The people have to understand what the book said. You must be out of your darn mind. This is verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Until what? I make thine enemies thy footstool. You put your foot on their darn neck. What do you think Joshua was talking about? Give me Psalm 8. Psalm 8, give me verse 1. This is Psalm 8, verse 1. He said, come near. Let these kings out for me real quick. Everybody come around. I want y'all to put y'all foot on their necks. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Uh-huh. Who has set thy glory above the heavens. Uh-huh. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies. That's right. That thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Mm -hmm. That thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, 
the work of thy fingers, the, new, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Mm -hmm. What is man that thou art mindful of him, mm -hmm. and the son of man that thou visit him? Mm -hmm. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, uh -huh. and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Okay. Thou made him to, do, to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Have put all things where? Under his feet. To put your foot on their darn necks. Keep going. All sheep, oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever pass through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. First Corinthians chapter 15. How excellent is thy name across the earth. By serve no God like us. All these people with made up gods. Got the nerve to get on my Facebook page talking about some. Yeah, have you read the Book of the Dead, though? Yeah, I read that terrible book. Book of the darn mess. I'm talking about darn Cyrus and Osiris, and it's his sister, but it's really his wife, and she had sex with her son, and all that. Man, you don't get this nasty, perverted <laughs> book out of my darn... You trying to say that's, that's the book? That's the one that holds the wisdom of life? If you don't get this stuff out of my darn faith, have you read the book? Have you read by the Bible? All the DJ people want to try to tell me this is made up? We keep reading the Joshua, all the detail? You gonna tell me somebody just sat here and just made up all, oh, until the border went from Heshbon all the way down to Escalon and all, you gonna tell me they went through all this trouble to spend, spend six, seven chapters describing detail of land and borders just because they want to convince somebody that, to believe in a fake God? Stop all this line, boy, y'all better stop acting stupid. Y'all ain't never picked up the Bible and just admit it. No. You never picked it up. You read a darn psalm. That's about it. That's about it. You read a psalm and maybe a proverb. Maybe Genesis. You know what I'm saying? Adam and Eve. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. maybe yeah. Your grandpa died and you was like, you know what I'm saying? Just what could I read to make me feel better? They told you, you know what? You might do good reading uh, Ecclesiastes, but make sure you read Songs of Solomon afterwards. That's the length that these people don't give you. Proverbs. Psalms. That's where the buck stops. I mean, you, you meet a real Christian, they might tell you to read Romans. Watch out now. <laughs> Get these people out here. Ain't nobody teaching no book. These people are scamming us. Just teach the people the truth. We can get somewhere you do that. Where are we at? First Corinthians 15. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. Then comes the end. Uh -huh. He shall have delivered up the kingdom to God uh -huh. even the Father when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Okay. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. All enemies gotta be under his feet. Let me put my foot on your darn yeah. neck. Boy, what's wrong with y'all? Right? He said he gonna reign until he put all enemies under his feet. What else? The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Mm, what that mean? Keep going. For he has put all things under his feet, but when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Okay, so that means the one who put, got everything put under him, it's, it's like, all, I mean, obviously, he's not, he's not putting something under himself, right? So then what's going to happen? And when all things shall be subdued under him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. He said, when it's all said and done, even Yahushua got to be subject to the Most High God. And he said, and it's going to work out that way so that God may be God in all. In other words, back to being one. Once it's back to being one, now, oh, real quick, grab a, uh, grab a, uh, what I'm looking for, T. Uh, uh, John? Yeah, what am I looking for, though? I am the Father of one. Yeah. Return to your glory. 17, 16. Yeah. That is 17. 17. Give me John chapter 17. Give me verse 1. Real quick. You know, it's a little, little bit of a detour, but real quick. It's John chapter 17, verse 1. John chapter 17, verse 1. 
These words spake Yahushua and lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Mm -hmm. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Mm -hmm. And this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Yahushua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Mm -hmm. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gave me to do. Mm -hmm. O now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. With the what? Mm -hmm. Glory that I had with thee before the world was. He trying to let them know. Work done. Now I'm ready to go back to how I used to be. You open up the beginning. John chapter 1 for me. John chapter 1 verse 1. He's trying to explain to you how the whole thing works. Ain't nobody gonna teach y'all this Bible, man. Yeah. Cold thing is, yeah, we okay with it too. We just sit there in the, under these churches, we just fine with it, just not learning the darn thing. Yeah, learn about forgiveness right. and grace every darn week, and they teaching that wrong. How you mess up how to forgive somebody? They don't even teach forgive people. You know what they teach? You just have to forgive yourself. Like, good on. You ain't never read nothing in the Bible that said forgive yourself. <laughs> and how you mess up forgiving people? That's just crazy to me. It's just like, y'all ain't put no effort in teaching the Bible. Y'all just, y'all just, mm, 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 collect $200, let's go. All right? Let's see what we're talking about. This is John chapter 1, verse 1. Watch this. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. In the beginning, we were one. That's what he's trying to say. In the beginning, we were one. He said, go ahead and go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. We, we good. I did the job I was supposed to do. Now I'm ready. I'm ready for you to return me to the glory which we once had. You know, when I was with you in the beginning. And I was the word. And I was with God. And I was God. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and return. That's what Corinthians was telling us. He said, hey, listen. God going to put everything under the sun's feet. And it's like, listen. And it's obvious that the person who is having things put under his feet is accepted, right? That's the exception. Like everything going to be put under his feet, he's not going to be put under his own feet. So he's the exception. Everything except him is going to be put under his feet. But after that, he got to be subject to God so that God may be all just like it was before. All in all. Whole thing going to line up. Everything has to line back up. Everything go back to how it was. Where your butt gonna be landing at though? That's what we have to get to. Right? Grab a. Grab a. What do we wanna go to now? Grab a. Let's go back to John. Where we leave off? 17, 5. John chapter 17. Verse 5. He said 17.5? That's what we got. You want to go back to Joshua? Joshua, yeah. Joshua is what I meant to say. Joshua 10.24. Okay. It's Joshua chapter 10, verse 24. All right, we look at Corinthians very clear with us. He was looking at it. He's like, man, the last. Matter of fact, he said, the, hold on. Corinthians told us the last thing that's going to be put under his feet is what? Death. Death. Grab, grab uh, Revelation 20 for me. Watch this. It's Revelation chapter 20. These people didn't know what it meant when Joshua was like, listen, everybody come near. Put your foot on their necks. They just looked at that. They just thought it was just, you know, like, oh, Joshua just being, ooh, Joshua being a little nasty right now. Ooh. Right? They didn't think, whole time, Joshua trying to let you know. I'm trying to show y'all something right now. I mean, it's a small scale. This thing going to happen on a much larger scale when y'all sure come to go. When he come to town, oh, yeah, that thing going to be big then. He just trying to let you know. This is what it's going to look like. You know that Joshua going through, he's pointing out all these kings, he's taking these kings, sticking them in caves. After they're done, kill all the people. King them out, put the foot on their neck, then he kill the kings. Right? That's what the Most High God is going to be doing. This is the God we serve. Sure, we in a time right now where we have to be humble. So that's why he tells nut, y'all relax. That's why we don't have no commandment to go out there and put, present judgment on people. He put the commandment on all these other Gentiles to put judgment on us. Yeah, he said, all judgment has been given to me by my father. Right? 
So now we done. We messed us up. We had our time to judge. This is our time to judge. Right? He sent us out. Go kill him. Kill them all. We messed it up. But we messed that up. So now, judgment is his. God can't have no wicked judge. When he come through, we ain't helping nothing. We lost that right. When he come through, he the only one killing stuff. I can do it right. That's basically what you trying to say. Y'all ain't going to do it. I can do this thing. I think y'all to be the judge. Y'all wicked. I can't handle wicked judge. Get out of the way. What we got? Revelation 20, verse 1. Verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Okay. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Okay. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Okay. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahushua and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. Mm -hmm. And they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. Okay. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Okay. This is the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such You got people that, that teach stupid stuff like, oh, that's the first resurrection, but it's gonna be a second resurrection. You've never read a second resurrection in the Bible. You've just never read it, but you because you see first, I can count. You say first, it gotta be two. I can count you two. The first reverend, second reverend, it's in there somewhere. Yeah, okay, you find it then. First resurrection. I don't know what's wrong with these people. <laughs> First resurrection, keep going. Let's hear about how the second one's gonna come right out. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Okay. On such the second death has no power. But so you see the one two, right? First resurrection, second death. That's the one two. Ain't no first resurrection, second resurrection. It's, it's the first resurrection, second death. It is appointed for all men to die. Mm -hmm. Then comes the judgment. After that's the judgment. Yeah. Oh, okay, we're gonna talk a little bit tonight. Grab John chapter five. I just wanna make sure people don't think, you know what I'm saying? Technically, you think first resurrection and second death. That means first death, second death, first resurrection, second resurrection. Logically, that's what you would think, right? So let's just make sure, you know what I'm saying? We got book to back up, you know what I'm saying? I could just be running my mouth right now, playing voodoo on y'all minds. I don't want y'all to feel like that. So I'm just going to open up this book. We're going to make sure we understand. We get a full understanding. This is uh, John chapter 5. Give me a bow. What verse I want, T? All judgment given to me. What that verse? Maybe 29 I want. Maybe a little earlier. Uh, 27. 27. I'll close. This is uh, 26. 26. Yeah. We're going to do John chapter 5, verse 26. Let's hear what the book says. For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given the Son to him to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And if you in the grave, that means you had how many deaths? One. One death, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So all that are in the grave, they gonna hear what? His voice. Okay. And shall come forth that they have done uh, that they, that have done good unto resurrection of life. So hold on, hold on. If you done good, you gonna have a resurrection unto what? Life. Okay, and then what else? And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. <laughs> uh oh. If you're part of the second resurrection, what that sound like? I mean, hold on. Let's. I don't want to count them though. So go back just a little bit. Just rewind. <laughs> rewind real quick. He said, all those that are good come to the resurrection of what? All that have, <laughs> all that have done good unto the resurrection of life. One. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Two. If you're part of that second resurrection, what that sound like to you? That's the second death. What's wrong with y'all? You gonna run out, you gonna change the man up. Look, you look at the Bible here, everybody be thinking, oh, the Bible made a mistake. He called it. First resurrection, second death. See, so it didn't. It left out the second resurrection. It didn't leave nothing out. You're not paying attention. The second resurrection is on to death. The only reason you being resurrected is to go to damnation. What's damnation? 
Oh, okay, let's go back to Revelation. You have to prove all of it out, right? Because if you leave any gap, it's somebody online that's going to leave a comment and be like, no, 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 Mr. Fillmore. No, 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 that's not. So you got to prove it all out. Prove it all out. Let's go back to Revelation 20, where we leave off. And John, John 5, 21 says, For as the Father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the Son quickens whom he will. And the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. That was the one he was looking for. This is, uh, this is Revelation chapter 20, what verse? Verse, we left off verse 6. This is Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Watch this. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Okay. But they shall be priests of God and of the Messiah and shall reign with him a thousand years. Okay. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Mm -hmm. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Mm -hmm. Gog and Magog. To gather them together to battle. Mm -hmm. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Mm -hmm. And they went up into the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Okay. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. The devil that deceived them was cast where? Into the lake of fire and brimstone. Okay. Where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was no, there was found no place for them. Okay. For I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. So the dead, they were dead, but they ended up standing before God. What does that sound like? They, they rose. That's, you want to talk about the second resurrection? All right, let's talk about it. We already had the first resurrection. He already told us that, right? That was the first resurrection. That already happened. He said, of these that came through the first resurrection, on them, they don't have no harm from the second death. That second death ain't got nothing to do with him. He never told us about the second resurrection. But we, what's being described right now is dead people that's standing. Let's just assume that's a resurrection. Okay, let's call it a second resurrection. Let's see, keep going. Small and great stand before God and the books were open. Mm -hmm. and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And okay. the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. All these dead people that were standing here, they were judged off of two or, or a couple books. One of them was the book of life. And if they name wasn't in there, what's going to happen? And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them. Uh -huh. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is the what? Second death. He telling you what the second death is. The judgment. That's why Yahushua said, if you do good, I'll resurrect your own life. If not, I'm going to resurrect your butt, but on to damnation. That's the second resurrection, a second death. Now, what you going to preach to your congregation? Oh, no, it's two resurrections. See, it's the first resurrection before the 1,000 years, brother. Then after the 1,000 years, you got the second resurrection. So you just, okay, you just go ahead and set people up. For, you just telling everybody what they're doing and going right to hell. Yeah, if you don't make it in the first one, brother, you can make it into that second one. Yeah, okay. You can't make it into the second one. Just you, you can. You can make it into that second one. You right on your way to that darn second one, ain't you? These people don't know what they darn teaching. I got people that sit here and argue with me about this stuff, and at the end of the day, they can't find nothing in the book that ever say second resurrection. Find it. Just trying to find any old way to excuse their sin, cause they don't want to get it right the first time. Keep going. This is the second death. And whosoever was notice, notice who went in there though. Death and who? Death and hell. Death and hell went in there. Who 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 did uh Paul say was the last uh the last one that had to be put under his feet? Death. There you go. Keep going, watch this. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay. And that's it. That's damnation. Right? It's just important for us to be very clear. It's easy. That's how easy it is to just look at the book. And if you don't know, just make an assumption. Logically, that's an okay assumption to make. Second, I mean, first resurrection, second resurrection. If you have first resurrection, you, you have to assume there's a second resurrection. But you have to stop and say, why didn't the Bible call it a second resurrection? 
It did. You just said the resurrection of the dead. But in that moment, why did you say first resurrection and second death? It didn't. It's talking about the same thing. Why didn't it call it? It's a reason. It, he God is trying to be as clear as possible with us. Like, don't feel like like he said second resurrection. We might get the idea like, oh, we getting resurrected. He trying to be clear. The only reason your butt getting resurrected so I can kill you again. Right. Let me just call this a second death. I don't want to confuse nobody. But guess what we gonna do? We gonna find a way to darn be confused. It's important for us to understand this. Right? Let's wrap up this uh, chapter in uh, John. I mean, not John. Joshua, sorry. Matter of fact, we ain't even got You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, let's jump into these maps. You know what I'm saying? You'll look at this. So this is the route, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can't see it, but this is the route. Y'all can come around if y'all want. But this is the route that we took. You know what I'm saying? What we try to do is we took this route right here. You know what I'm saying? Came around here. Came through here. Right through here. We stopped at Hedgebond, a place called Hedgebond. Then we took all this land right here. All right? So we fought. If y'all remember, we, we came through the Edomites. They wouldn't let us through, so we just came through, right? Then we fought the Moabites. And I remember the Moabites was uh was uh Balaam, all right? Balaam and all them, you know what I'm saying? So we fought them, took their land. We fought some of the Amorites. We fought Ammon, you know what I'm saying? Once we took this land, three tribes ended up staying over in this land. But Moses told them, if y'all take this land. Y'all still got to come over and help us fight. So we still mobbing together at this point. So we go up here, take this part, and then we come back down. So then first thing we did was Jericho right here. Right? We camped out of Gilgal, and then we went to Jericho. Took Jericho. Then Ai. Right there. That's Ai right there. Then the place Gibeon made peace with them. Right? This is Jerusalem, Bethlehem. We ain't really have too much direct dealings with them yet. Right? But these are all the kings that we just took over. Took over all these kings this way. Then we start going this way. Right? So we haven't read this part yet. But we, we, we start going this way. Um, and coming all the way up here and taking over all this land. After we took over all this land. Then the Most High God gave us rest. Right? He is like, okay, y'all can relax. Because we pretty much got the bulk of it. It was still more to go. But we pretty much got the bulk of it. So then. Joshua divided it all up. He started dividing that thing. You know what I'm saying? So he started that thing. I think the first one that got divided was Caleb. Right? So Caleb, you know what I'm saying? He went first. You know what I'm saying? Got to pick out his land. And we remember why Caleb got to pick out his first. Because him and Joshua, Joshua were the only ones that went over. And they came back with a good report. The only one from that old generation. That's crazy. Right? They came back with a good report. Everybody else had to die off. So Caleb, I think he is 85 years old. Yeah, I think he was 85 or 84, one of those. It might have been 80. Might be 80, you know what I'm saying? He might be 80 flat, actually. I don't know. We have to double check. But uh, uh, Caleb, you know what I'm saying, 80 something, he came in there. I remember he was like, uh, you know what I'm saying? As strong as I was back then. Yeah, he said, I'm still, I'm still with the business. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you talking about? I can still get it. I can still get it like I was when I was 40. What you talking about? Right? So, you know what I'm saying? He went out, he took his land. And if I'm not mistaken, the next we did was Ephraim and Manasseh. These already had their land. So these are the three tribes that already had their land. You have Reuben, you have Gad, and then you had half of Manasseh. Manasseh is over here and over here. So half of the tribes of Manasseh stayed on this side. This is the land that Most High God was actually given to us. This was like extra credit. So then we set up Caleb, Ephraim and Manasseh, if I'm not mistaken, and then we just start going down the line, setting up all these different lands, right? You have Simeon, and we're going to talk about this next week. You have Simeon, they got mixed up with, with Judah. Judah. So Simeon didn't get their own land. They got mixed up with Judah, they had right? Share with Judah they had to share it. They had scattered all around in Judah stuff, okay? Then you have Dan. And that who, was because of uh, what happened in Genesis. Yeah, and we're going we gonna, we gonna to dig that deep into that, and we're going to kind of break it open next week. 
Um, then you had Dan, and you had somebody who didn't like that. Oh, Manasseh was the way. Manasseh on this side, Manasseh didn't like they part of the land. So they was told, go on up there and take some other land. Manasseh was like, no, nah, that's too hard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Manasseh just took this part. So you see Manasseh is a big old, you know what I'm saying? He got a lot of land on both sides. You know what I'm saying? You got Issachar, yeah, Zebulun, Dan, Dan Asher. The that didn't really take the land like they were supposed to. Naphtali. Yeah, Dan did, but they ended up getting pushed out here because yeah, yeah, they yeah, wanted yeah. more land later on. Yeah. We'll get to that too. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Dan is going to end up way up here. You know what I'm saying? They start off down here, but they're going to get pushed out up here. Um, and we'll talk about the reasons why and all that. All right? So this is how all the, all the land got divided by lots according to what Moses set up and the Most High God guy Moses. Joshua kind of set that thing through. But keep in mind, all these different places, they had to go and fight. So yeah, when Caleb fight, came, man. he fought. When Judah came and took the rest, they fought. Certain things like Jerusalem, certain places like that, they were still there. They didn't kick everybody out. So the Most High God wasn't too impressed with that. People stayed in the land. We started to make deals with people in the land. So as we go into Judges, we're going to see the, the negative effect of us not obeying God. Right, that's an important part of this. We took the land when Joshua was running the show. We took all the land that Joshua said. When he starts sending us out by ourselves, we start making deals, cutting deals with people. All right, and we're gonna see the negative effect of that next week. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pray out.